I got my ticket for the long way round. How do the oceans get divvied up between the countries bordering the same sea area? Rivers, mountains and continents have helped establish the boundaries of countries over the years. During the age of exploration in the 15th to the 17th centuries, the then superpowers agreed that no one would own the sea. This freedom of the seas doctrine was proposed in 1609 and became part of international law in the 1800s. About 163 countries have signed the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, 1973 to 1982. Section 7 states that all ships must sail under the flag of one country and so enjoy the right to travel the high seas. That is, the area beyond all nations' sovereignty, where all states can sail their ships. Most countries have inland waters or bays territorial waters that extend for up to 12 nautical miles, a contiguous zone of limited enforcement extending to 24 nautical miles, and an exclusive economic zone extending to 200 nautical miles from the coastline. Outside that 200 mile distance is international waters or the high seas. You may have heard of pirates roaming the high seas. This second diagram taken from the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, explains these zones in more detail. A coastal nation has control of all resources on or under its continental shelf, living or not, but no control over any living organisms in the sea that are beyond its exclusive economic zone, that is, the 200 nautical miles. This gives it the right to conduct petroleum drilling works and lay submarine cables or pipelines on its continental shelf. Study this map in the next one and start to consider the types of laws or treaties that would need to be in existence to allow ships to go about their business peaceably. Have a look at the map showing the ocean zones around Australia. Our state and sovereign territorial waters extend to 12 nautical miles off the coast and are shown in blue. The green sections show our exclusive economic zone, which extends to 200 nautical miles off the coast. The dark pink area shows where the United Nations has agreed, for the first time, to allow a country to extend its sovereign rights to the continental shelf beyond the normal 200 nautical miles. The dotted pink line shows where we have requested the United Nations to agree to an extension of the continental shelf rights. The red line shows where we have treaties with our neighbours, stating where our exclusive economic zone ends. We've got treaties with Indonesia, Timor-Leste, Papua New Guinea, France and New Zealand. The Timor Sea Treaty between Australia and Timor-Leste shows the Joint Petroleum Development Area and is in yellow. The Mediterranean Sea, on the other hand, has about 21 countries bordering it. The sea is less than 400 nautical miles from north to south and so no country can claim a 200 mile exclusive economic zone. The sovereignty of the countries has been limited to between 6 and 12 nautical miles shown in dark blue. This has allowed a section through the middle of the Mediterranean shown in pale blue to still be considered the high seas. When we were on our cruise, we sailed out of Italian territorial waters into the high seas. To get to the port of Split, we had to go through the Croatian Ecological and Fisheries Protection Zone in dark red, then into Croatian territorial waters and then Croatian inland waters. We travelled around the boot of Italy on the high seas. We then went into French territorial waters and ecological protection zone before sailing into the Spanish fisheries protection zone. Study these last two maps and you will see that there's a great disparity between the amount of ocean that countries can claim.